This is LS11. Welcome along to LS11 from Proper Sport. And, of course, it is a very special one for us uh, this week because it's, of course, uh, the uh, 10th anniversary of promotion from League One. And uh, to do that, we'll, we thought we'd have a little bit of a special episode for you uh, this week. Joining us, as ever, our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives, it is, of course, Ryan Wilson. Hello, mate. You are right. Good morning. Yeah, I'm not bad. Thank you. Long time no see. Long time no see. It's good to see yeah. you. Yeah. About 24 hours, and, yeah. I could, and I could just see Jermaine there enjoying the intro music. Jermaine, that's one of my tracks. If you like it, come to one of our gigs. Simon's normally there, so um, he can be your plus one. Uh, is, very, he, is he there because it's free? Um, <laughs> yeah, he normally comes backstage and nabs a few free beers as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> uh, alongside Ryan, uh, as ever, our former footballer, it is, of course, from Leeds United, it is Ben Parker. Are you all right, Ben? No, I'm not actually. Um, oh. Ryan's dishing, dishing these invites out. Where's mine? Tell me ben, about it. Ben, you're always welcome. You know that. Oh, you know that. Cheers, mate. Looking forward yeah, to it. You can be our roadie. You can carry my guitar. Hey, out, <laughs> out, out, out for now. <laughs> out for now. He'll probably have. It, he'll probably get injured, like uh, uh, with a speaker or something. That's that's the only problem. Ah, oh, that was too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Um, uh, you've you've already heard from him, but uh, uh, the uh, League One hero, of course, Jermaine Beckford, uh, is with us as well. Hi, Jermaine. How are you going? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. How are you guys been? Yeah, very good. How's lockdown good. treating you? Uh, lockdown's really, really good. Homeschooling is is terrible. I don't understand why every teacher hasn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I heartily agree. I heartily agree. And alongside yourself, uh, the manager that coursed away uh, through that League One and what, what a season it was. It is, of course, Simon Grayson. Hi, Simon. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Morning, all. Uh, how's Morning. The lockdown been for you, Simon? Yeah, not too bad, to be fair. Trying to keep fit and then drinking on a night time, so it's a decent combination. <laughs> <laughs> so burning the calories off, putting them on uh, in the evening. Um, that's a good good idea, that. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to obviously uh, go, cast our eye back over that uh, uh, League One season and uh, the promotion. Uh, where, where, where do you want to start? Should we start, I think, maybe uh, having a look back at the, the end of the previous season, Simon, because uh, it came so, so close close to promotion at the end of that previous season um, but sort of that game against uh, in the playoffs against Millwall you had a real surge at the end of that season and uh, you you came within a whisper within a whisper of getting promotion you know pretty soon after you joined yeah look we we, we got to the playoff semi-finals and we went down to Millwall thinking that we came back to Ellen Road a few days later with the game's still intact and still with a chance of uh, getting uh, a, a real positive result at home, we could do that. So so obviously we lost 1-0 down there, but then we got back to Ellen Road on that, I think it was a Tuesday night, and, and the place was rocking. The atmosphere was electric and we played really well. We, we battered them from start to finish, um, got the goal, and then just as it was really going really well for us, one of their lads got a head injury, which took the uh, the wind out of our sails, really. And it just sort of took us a lot to get going again. And ultimately, Jimmy Abdu got a winner for them. And uh, it meant that we suffered disappointment of uh, losing in the playoffs. But what we, what we spoke about afterwards in the dressing room was, let's use this as a motivation for next year. Let's make sure that we don't go through the, the heartache of, um, of a semi-final or even a playoff final. Um, that some of the lads had done a few years ago when they'd lost to Doncaster. So make sure that we go one step further. And that was all our, that's all we talked about pre-season when we went back. So going into pre-season, Simon, w- w- was was there a lot of talk about straight automatic promotion or were you just looking for the top six? Or, or how, how, you know, you've obviously said like, let's take that as inspiration, how well we've done and, and take it one step further. Was it a top two? it had to be a top two for the next season. Without a shadow of doubt, you know the expectancy levels of, of supporters connected with Leeds United. There is a no settling, really, for being in the top six. Um, it was all about every year Leeds United were favourites for the division to go back up. So we had to make sure that we set our sights high and, and mm-hmm. ultimately try and reach them. Um, because if you're, set, if you're happy with just being in the playoffs... When the season has not started, then then you 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 you're starting on a negative footing straight away. So we just, we wanted to get automatic promotion, and 
And as the lads will tell you, they prefer automatic promotion because then they can be on a beach quicker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what you mean, Gaffer. <laughs> you were all, all with the video over the summer. Yeah, true. <laughs> I think we, it... we, 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 we felt that as well, though, Bex, didn't we, as players? We, like, you, you know, as a squad, you're looking around the change room. Um, you, you look at the top yourself, Bex, and um, with Luciano, best strike force in the, in the division, probably outside the Premier League, to be honest. Uh, when you're looking around the, the dressing room, you see the quality of players we had. We knew we should be getting automatic that season, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, but we also had a self-belief, self-confidence, and we had such a, uh, a close-knit squad as well. You know, that, that inevitably works, uh, works wonders as well. Because, you know, to trust your, your friends more so than to, to trust associates. And everybody in that, that squad were friends, you know. So, so we all had... The same goal in mind, and and we had great direction from from Gaffer and his team as well. Yeah, uh, just just off the back of that, Jermaine, um, just ahead of the next season um, starting, literally days before, uh, Fabian Delf was sold. I mean, obviously Fabian, a great talent. Um, you know, he, he wasn't destined for League One. You know, for a long time, we, we know that, and we know the perils of being um, a, a club in League One. You play best players do we get cherry picked? How did that affect the squad, the playing squad, and, and you as well, Simon? I mean, we'll go to you first, Jermaine and Ben. How did that affect one of your best players being sold days before the start of the season? Um, you know, we we all knew it was going to happen eventually, as you mentioned. Like he's, it, Fabian's uh, talents were were far exceeded um, League One level, so none of us were surprised to see that happen. Um, but as I mentioned, we, we had such a, a tight knit squad. We knew that we all we needed to do was was knit together, and whoever the gaffer decided to put in in place of uh, Fabs was going to do a, a good a job, hopefully as as Fabs anyway. So um, it was a it was a, a shame to see him leave, but at the same time there was a, a sense of of pride as well, you know, to see somebody so young um, come into the squad do really well. Uh, and then and then push himself to to be able to play at the next level. Yeah, Simon, what, what did that make your job a lot harder losing one of your, your best players like ahead of the the new campaign? Well, it was inevitable that it was going to happen. Um, it's just one of them things that a talent like Fab was always going to get um, cherry picked to the Premier League, and so it was no surprise. And obviously, behind the scenes, we were. We were planning of different players that are available who would maybe try and fit the same sort of mould. Not necessarily the same sort of talent because we couldn't work in the in the, uh, the, um, the right division to be able to attract that sort of player. But I knew I had to bring in a certain type of player that would help us get promoted. And, and I think the replacement I brought in was probably Michael Doyle and looked at him that he was an experienced player, played in the championship, loved the tackle, could play, was a good kid. Um, and, and looked at me... He was brought in to do a different type of job that Fabian did. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep with the recruitment gaffer in that off season. You mentioned bringing Doyler in, also Paddy Kidnorbo as well. So kind of two real leaders there. Yeah, look, you have to get the right characteristics within the group. You know what I mean? You have to have people that really care about the game, but also Leeds United supporters want to see players and a team play with passion and run through a brick wall and make a challenge. Sometimes you get a bigger cheer from a crunching tackle that gets a team going, sometimes in a goal, sometimes, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and certainly with Paddy, he had plenty about him. I knew that Paddy would be a great um, um, combination partnership with Richard Naylor, two, two rock-hard centre-hours. <laughs> they were really scary, weren't they? Yeah, it's really tough to get past. And if you have Doyler in front of them, then you, you, ain't, got, you ain't got much leeway going there, have you? Really? So yeah. We knew... I knew that we had the talented group of players, as you mentioned before, people like Jermaine, Luciano, Johnny, uh, Killer, Bradley got back into the team and then um, and we had Snodgrass. So we had enough in that sort of area of the pitch that would go and win us games. We just wanted a little bit more um, steelness about us uh, in them key positions. Yeah. 
I'm yeah. interested as well, Simon. Uh, I think I remember an interview with you uh, at the beginning of that season where you uh, effectively, I suppose a lot of managers maybe go into a season thinking that, that it was like you were, you were going to go into not just looking at promotion from League One, but you were looking at every competition and doing well in every single competition going into that season. And that was really sort of like that mindset of going in, that sort of positive mindset. Yeah, we wanted to have a winning mentality. So no matter whether it was a pre-season game we were involved in or um, the league trophy or the FA Cup or the league, we wanted to win games and we wanted to keep a momentum going. We spe- Especially in the part of the season, we had to get momentum going to really get everybody on side, a real positive feel about the place. And we started the season really well. But it was all about making sure that every game we went into, we wanted to go and win it. We wanted to give the, the, the fans the success that they have been starved of for, for a few years. And even if it meant just in the Wembley appearance in the, whatever it's called back then, checker trade or whatever, then it, then so be it. It was a day out at Wembley and people connected with Leeds would have loved something like that. But um, ultimately, the biggest prize was trying to get promotion. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, let, let's come on to that start of League One then, shall we? That first game uh, against Exeter, 2-1 win. Jermaine, uh, not a bad performance from yourself in that game. And I believe maybe Ben Parker had a little uh, a little bit of help there as well for you. Not yeah, maybe. I, not maybe. I, that was an unbelievable assist. Don't take it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say, Darren, it was probably the best 30 minutes throughout the season. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> With that blistering run through the middle of the park and that assist to Jermaine, it was superb, Ben. Yeah, Bex had the easy job by putting him back of the net. But um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 from, from what I remember of that game, we, we didn't play particularly well, but that, that for me were kind of... The, the start of that, the real, of the really good run we went, we went on. But we didn't really play too well in games, but we knew how to win. Did you feel that, Bex? Yeah. Well, well, there were... It, yes and no. <laughs> um, I feel we definitely knew how to win games. Um, and we went into some games with a little bit more confident than we did in other games. I don't know why. Um, and those games, we tended to dominate possession and, and just completely blow teams off the park. Um, but the winning, the winning mentality, we definitely had that right from the from the offset, right from the offset. I think I must have been the only manager to get six points on that day because driving into the game, I got three points for driving. Did you? Three points for the game as well. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so that's why you got manager of the month. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Ben, you, you, you say a, a, a blistering thirty minutes uh, from yourself, um, but I don't want to bring up um, injury again. Um, but I, I, I believe maybe you suffered one in that game. Yeah, um, I was too quick for my own good, Darren. That little thing, a little, a little, a little hamstring. <laughs> um, no, but um, often from a purple point of view, it's frustrating. Uh, Bex will say first game of season. Like you can do all pre-season training, running, games as much as you want. You're not really interested in all that, to be honest. You just want to get to the first game of season. For some reason, it's always red hot. <laughs> it's um, energy. It's nice. Yeah. It's, um, but um, no, yeah, it, was, it was frustrating, but it was, it was just good for, for the boys to get off to a winning start. That, that's, all, that's all we wanted. That was, that was a talk from, from the gaffer and um, from Snods and Dusty as well. But um, for Bex to get two goals, striker's dream. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I got. Do you know what? To be fair, I got a, uh, an assist from both fullbacks that game. I think I got one from you, and then the second one was from Crowe, Jason Crowe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not bad. A cheeky little just... header at the near post in front of the keeper. Boom! Get in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heading, heading's definitely my strong point as well. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, what, you lads do do a lot of credit to yourselves because I can't remember much about that game. You lads can remember assist goals, where you scored it from. But I, but I suppose when I look back at my career, I can remember all my assists and goals because there weren't too many. <laughs> <laughs> you remember all six of them? Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> and, um, I think I got into, just into double figures, if you don't mind. <laughs> don't take that away from me. Yeah, no, don't take wow. it away from me. But to, talk, talking to successes, because, I mean, that was like a blistering start to the season. It was a, a record-breaking start to the season, Simon, for Leeds United. 
Yeah, well, we, we knew and stressed to everybody that we needed to get to a positive start. We didn't need any hangover from the previous season of the, the playoffs, as we mentioned. So we needed to get off to a real positive start, really get the home form really on song, get the crowd back, get them really behind behind us. And even when things weren't probably going our way in games, we needed them to stick by us and, and drag that ball into a net. And we scored a lot of late goals throughout that season and, and seasons afterwards as well. And And it was important that we... Got, got on the run and I think we either broke or, or equaled a record from Dom Revy's team. Yeah, I think I think you just broke it, Simon. Um, 1973, the record was before that and you and the guys broke it, yeah, with that with that successful start you had. I mean, obviously as a Leeds fan, I can remember that, that season really well and I remember the start and it was superb because like going back to the start of the podcast, that Millwall game was heartbreaking really because we were so close. Um, but it was so good for us to continue the, from the back end of last season into the new season. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. And um, it, it was it was absolutely brilliant, really. Um, one, uh, another game in this first half of the season, what stood out for me, um, we talk about late goals, Simon, was the, the Norwich game at Ellen Road. Um, it was on a Tuesday or Friday evening. It was an evening game under the floodlights, as I remember. Um, Jermaine, you got that winning goal 93rd 94th minute um it was a crap goal kick um from keep i think it was forster wasn't it? Forster, yeah. fraser forster yeah i mean h- how did that feel to score i i mean at this point Leeds were top of the table we wanted to stay there how did that feel to score that at the last minute at Allen road under the lights you know it was incredible because the game itself it was a tough game norwich were one of the favorites i think they had they just come down from uh from the championship that's I think the I, I think they'd just yeah. been relegated, yes. yeah. Yeah, and they were one of the favourites. They they managed to keep hold of quite a few of the, the, the boys they had in the championship as well. Um and that was probably for me one of the, the hardest games that we'd had at Ellen Road. Um mm. leading up to the to the the late goal, when I saw like when the goalkeeper kicks the ball from a goal kick, defenders are supposed to you know, see where the ball is. They're supposed to be on the half turn, half to sh- half shoulder. So they see where the goalkeeper is and they see the rest of the pitch. The defender that was marking me, he was looking at me and I was looking at the goalkeeper. And as soon as I saw the ball bobbling towards me, I thought, oh, this is a dream here. It's an absolute, <laughs> it's a great opportunity. I had a head start on him and fortunately with, with being quite quick, I managed to, to get a decent little bit of a head start on him and yeah. Oh wow. Mm. Just to, to put the ball in the back of the net and, and right at the end of the game. I slid on my knees, leaning all the way back, celebrating. It was a long very long slide that one, as I remember. You see it slide I'm, forever forever. Because I'm a very fast player. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly it was it was such an amazing moment. Um, to be able to to score the winner, so scoring the winner in any game is is dreamy. I'll be honest with you, but when you're doing it at Ellen Road under the lights as well, in front of a packed house, oh wow! Yeah. Uh, and against one of your your promotion uh, rivals, it's, it just makes it that much sweeter. Yeah, yeah, it it, it was brilliant. Aaron. Ellen Road exploded like it did a few times that season. We will we will go on to that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so, so the first half of the season was. Very, very good. Um, we got uh, to the end of Christmas and we'd won 17, drawn five and only lost one, which was away at Millwall. Bl- bloody Millwall, they're just one of them teams out there that really, really frustrate you. Uh, I mean, even now, Leeds can't win away at Millwall, so you guys, you know, you didn't go out wrong there. Simon, um, you couldn't have got a better first half of the season. How, how was it for you, um, that first half of the season? Yeah, I think I think when you look back on that season, we'd like we said in probably earlier that there was games where we probably didn't play well, but we did whatever you had to do to win games. That's when, that's what how you that's how you achieve promotions. That's how you achieve success as clubs. When you're not playing really well, you win a football match. That Norwich game you're talking about then is a prime example. They were probably the far better team on the night, and that little bit of uh, magic from Jermaine in the last minute got, gets you the win. And and that's how we were. We were. We were, t- we were always a team that were hard working. We had some flair players, but we weren't teams for, a team that wanted to play out from the back all the time. And, and we wanted to make sure that we we played in the final third where it could hurt the opposition because we knew we had 
strike. We had p- people that could score and create goals for fun in our team. So I knew that defences in, in League One were, were frightened of our attacking players and we wanted to make sure we played in the opposition's half as, as often as possible. So it was it was first part done, first half of the season, but we still knew that uh, a long way to go. We were confident, but not overconfident. We had to make sure that we keep focusing on every game that we're just about to be involved in. Yeah. I'm intrigued as well about sort of like how you sort of keep the, the team spirit going because obviously when you're winning, obviously there's a positive attitude around the club when, when you're winning. But how do you sort of keep that sort of like team spirit? What sort of things did you guys do sort of like socially over those uh, first few months? The things you could probably talk about, I'm thinking. Specs <laughs> knows. I'll leave that one to the players to talk about. <laughs> well, we, we went go karting and paintballing. <laughs> um, just yeah. general socialising. Yeah, they, they were the ones that we, they were the things that we organised as the staff. I'm not sure what they did after that. that to them. <laughs> I would imagine. Just, just standard, standard stuff, night out, uh, nights out, um, try and get away when we can do when there's there's a few days break. And um, like I said, we're, we're, we're all friends. So like whenever we had the opportunity to hang, uh, hang out with each other outside of the training ground or, or the stadium, we did, you know, and we, we tried to make the most of that. And I think that's, that's one of the major things that, that kept us... Um, all on board and, and fighting for the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a good it's a good point that because I think um, any successful teams and we've um, been involved in uh, some that you, you get that you socialise with lads away from 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 the training ground, but also at the training ground. I, I for me personally, I I love training. I'm not saying that because you're here, gaffer. By the way, but um, like uh, for, for a, a, a big thing with like, a Friday, we'd have like, a little five aside competition. Uh, we'd have to, then we'd have to pick a worst trainer out of that, and then they'd have to like wear a jersey like the, the following Friday, and it was all good, all good banter. And now that I think we took that from from a Friday into the game, we were, we were so relaxed, but also we knew we knew his roles. Uh, but it was just a good feel factor coming into the training ground, and then obviously when you socialise with lads as well. Yeah. It sounds like good fun. Um, Simon, did you ever catch him out being a bit naughty in you and? Uh... Glenn Snodden and Co. have to uh, reel them in a little bit. No, no, they were very good at keeping things under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stealth. Well, well done. Forget that I, do, I, think, I think they did forget as well that I did know, know quite a few people in town and the bars and the bouncers and stuff like that. So I did to get to hear a few things. But while they were winning, then I, I let them carry on what they were doing because it was work, it was a success. Yeah, ah, good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. While you're obviously flying high in the league as well, um, there was a, uh, well, a small little matter of a few little nice little cup runs that you had as well. Um, league Cup, uh, you're beating Darlington and Watford, um, but then a, a little defeat to Liverpool. Um, and then, of course, uh, not not a bad little run uh, in the FA Cup. And we talked earlier on, Simon, about how it was important to, um, you know, win on all fronts and keeping that winning mentality going. I mean, the, the FA Cup run, I mean, w- was 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 fantastic. Uh, not just because we still talk about it now for, for obvious reasons, but um, just for, from the sort of like, the, the the feeling that the whole club got from that run. Yeah, look, it was all about trying to keep momentum going and keeping a winning mentality going. And and a lot of people will remember, maybe some won't remember that we we nearly didn't even get to get to sort of the the third round of the FA Cup because Kettering mm. took us to a replay, didn't they? And and the extra time at Ellen Road as well before we obviously went to Old Trafford. Um, so it was great to keep things going. Um, then the Tottenham game came along, and did it did it lose a little bit of focus from the players and, and everybody? I'm not sure you can say that played a part in it, but what I will say is that how can you not? How can you not get carried away with the euphoria of beating Man United and then trying to pick yourselves up from I think it was maybe Wickham or somebody like that the following game, um, and then going to Tottenham. So it was sort of a, a double-edged sword that them big games and big victories that we had at Old Trafford as mentioned sort of probably just took the edge off the league a little bit hence why we sort of went through a little bit of a sticky patch at times yeah 
Uh, t- Jermaine, um, obviously the FA Cup third round, Manchester United. Um, how how was it for you and Ben? Obviously, part of the playing squad. How was it when when that draw got picked? Thinking, wow, we're going away to, to Man United. How, how did that feel? And what what were the boys thinking and saying when when that draw was made? Um, didn't we still have to win the second? Well, the replay when it was announced. Yeah, they made the draw at Tipton. They made the draw at Ketchum and it came through the playing Man United, but we still had to get through the replay, didn't we? That's right, yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> extra time. <laughs> yeah. So, did, did that feel like it gave you a bit of extra incentive to try and get past Kettering, even though, like say, Kettering give, give us a bit of a tough time, really? Um, but going, going to Old Trafford, I mean, uh, you know, that day, it's it's probably one of the best days Leeds have had in a long, long time. And, um, and still, and still now really, I think, um, it's, 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 it's in living memory. We still see, yeah, look, Jermaine, you're Ellen road quite often. Leeds fans still sing about it. Um, so go into the game, you're at old traffic during the dressing room and you maybe walked out, checked the pitch out before the game. What was it like walking around Old Trafford thinking, wow, this is like at the time, Man United were one of the top, top teams in Europe. I mean, it can't really got better than that for a, for a, a, a player. No, well, they they just come off the back of winning the Premier League as well, didn't they? Um, yeah. uh, and they were were they top or second in the in the Premier League at the time when we played them. So they were on a really really good roll, uh, really good run. Um, but like we we already had that mentality, that winning mentality, that never say never um, attitude. Um, and ultimately, it's 11 men against 11 men. Mm. You know, and we knew if we put everything that we've got into it, we're going to come off the pitch victorious uh, because they're going to underestimate us um, because of the, the position we are, uh, because of the league that we were in at the time. Yeah. Um, not realising that we have got so much more than um, the majority of, of teams in League One and in the championship at the time. So... Uh, we knew we were going to cause them issues, but listen, let's let's not get away from the fact that it's a, a humongous game um, for everybody involved, um, and to to be able to play at at Old Trafford wearing a Leeds United kit as well uh, is is amazing. The the noise that were coming out of that place was phenomenal, especially from the Leeds fans. So, um, I, I remember bits of of the journey into uh, Old Trafford. And seeing fans uh, along the side, just white strips everywhere, just everywhere, flags. I felt like I was playing in Europe. It was incredible. <laughs> it was yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. I wonder, if Simon, um, do you have to do much of a team talk ahead of one of those games? What, what do you say to a team before they go out against Manchester United at Old Trafford? I think most of the time the lads will tell you when they were walking through town, the city, they were they were reminded of the rivalry to them, so that it didn't really sort of take too much from my perspective to tell them how much the game meant to uh, to the league's public. But ultimately, they were reigning Premier League champions. We were League One, so it was it was David against Goliath, really. And the the last thing, the last couple of things I remember saying in the dressing room was, there hasn't been a shock of this third round. Why can't it be us today at Old Trafford? Why can't it be us that are going to be, everybody's going to be talking about? Why is it not going to be a new hero of the FA Cup and this story could be played in years to years to come? Um, and ultimately wanted to have no regrets as well, that we came off that pitch and give everything that we could, regardless if we won the game. We wanted to show people that we had some good players and we were a good team and we could go up against some of the best players in, in Europe, uh, if not the world that particular time and don't forget they had a real strong team that day they didn't play like the kids or anything like that they had some world class players playing were Rooney, Berbatov um, Johnny Evans and uh, Wes Brown and people like that and, and many others Darren Gibson but ultimately as well Sir Alex Ferguson wasn't he knew exactly what this game meant he didn't want to be beaten by one of his biggest rivals and even though we were a League One club mm. Coming on to um, uh, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, um, what, what was it like, uh, obviously, of, I'm interested in what it was like on the touchline next to him. You know, you, you often hear about the sort of like the hairdryer and that sort of thing. What sort of things could you hear coming from uh, from that side of the dugout? Does he say that much during a match? 
Um, no, because I'm, I'm normally stood up right on the touchline. He was sat back in his seat most of the time. I think the biggest air dryer who got it on that particular day was the fourth official. He only put probably four minutes up when he probably wanted 14 <laughs> minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and the referee probably got it when he blew to the final whistle to allow us to win the game. So, uh, no, like I've said a few times, um, he was very complimentary of how we played and that we deserved to win. Look, it was it was through gritted teeth, without a shadow of a doubt. But he generally did mean it that we were we performed really well on the day and and were worthy winners in that. And um, and it was it was a big boost to us all that we could go head to head with some of the best players and get a big result. But ultimately, we still knew that that was the icing on the cake of results, and we had to go back to the bread and butter very quickly of the league. How did um, you guys celebrate? Can can you remember? Um, like Ben, were, were, Ben, were you were you actually at the game with the squad? Yeah, I um, I travelled. I just come back. Um, just had um, operation on my hip, so I um, travelled with squad. Um, for some reason, Gaffer didn't put me on bench. Can't can't believe that still to this day. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I, were, I, were, I were never ready for that to be honest. But um, no, I, I remember quite a lot of that day. Um, mm the build up to it, what Gaffer said there about the team talk. I think that team talk was just great. It just um, settled everybody down. Even right used to write the names, uh, get the team sheet off the ref of the captain coming right at the team sheet down. And we see names like say Gary Neville, Berbatov, Rooney. And um usually throughout the league, Gaffer would go talk through each player's like strengths, weaknesses, how they expects to play. Be just like, forget that you know about these players. You see you see him on Sky, you see him on match at day. Um, this is what we're going to do and outline our game plan because like what Beck said as well, we, we were a confident bunch. We were winning games. We, um, we we knew we had quality within our change room. So it was focused on us in, in a strange way, even though we're playing one of the best teams in Europe. Um, but then but then afterwards, um, I would delight there were pizzas in there. So I'm thinking straight up, straight up for the pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, do you mind? Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm just wondering. I mean, obviously, the goal itself, um, uh, fantastic, and to score at, at Old Trafford is that. I mean, it's obviously you. You remember every single goal that you've scored, but it, is that the one that absolutely stands out for you uh, of all the goals you've scored during your career? I definitely put it in my top uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. <laughs> um, yeah, look, because of, because of what's Simon saying? Do you think that that goal was more important than the Bristol Rovers goal? Then, ooh, I would say it's more memorable than the Bristol Rovers goal. But in 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 terms of importance, I would definitely put the Bristol one above the Man United one because it's we worked so hard tirelessly for the duration of the season for it to come down to one game the final game um, I, I think I think that one would 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 trump the Man United one hmm. I mean as so a least really, fan I so agree really, yeah. so really it, it, off the back of it it's been a double barrel win really you get all the accolades for scoring against Bristol Rovers and you get a song named after your wife scoring at Old Trafford so it's worth it <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's a win-win, yeah. <laughs> I don't make the rules, Gaffer. I don't make the rules. <laughs> wow. Uh, so um, after after that, it was uh, uh, another Premier League team, um, Tottenham, uh, that you had a, a game against. I mean, at that point, Simon, um, you know, you, you, after beating Manchester United, you can't really fear anybody, I suppose, after beating Man United. No, it's, well, it's like you said, uh, we're just trying, going in to try and win every game possible and going down to um, White Hart Lane against another strong team. Um, I think Harry Redknapp was the manager at the time. Um, that We, we were going to go down there and still do, try to do ourselves justice, make sure, see where we were going to go. Enjoy, again, playing against some of the best players in the Premier League. And if we could get another scalp under our belts, then, then brilliant. Uh, and we obviously knew it was going to be tough. But he obviously uh, went down there and took the back to Ellen Road with a replay again. Yep. And and do you know what? Bowing out to, to Spurs, you know, we're a League One team. I think every Leeds fan were just so proud, especially after the, the Man United game as well. You know, 
But ultimately, as well, there's always on on the lips of every Leeds player, uh, sorry, every Leeds fan as well was, um, you know, let's concentrate on the league now. And I, I know that's a bit of a cliche saying if you go out, even if you're a, a Premier League team and you go out of a cup early, it's always like, oh, we'll concentrate on the league. But it really meant that for us because we were itching to get out of that league. It really, really was. Um, but the form started to tail off after that. Um, Simon, it, uh, was do you feel like maybe it was uh, too many congested fixtures with the replays um that the the, the, tr- the league trophy we'd played quite a few games and we got to the semi-final in the northern section um obviously in the in league one like the championships a lot of games anyway tuesday saturday D- do you think that we'd kind of bit off more than we could chew really um and maybe that dip in form were just the players simply tired or or you know just too many games it's a possibility, like you said, we got to the played Carlisle in the in the league trophy, the replays of the cup games and all the league games. It possibly could have been. We didn't have the biggest of squads anyway. We weren't carrying 25, 30 man squad or anything like that. Um, but but it was a it was a catch twenty two situation, wasn't it? Because we wanted to keep winning games early part of the season, get momentum going, and into the second half of the season that. They might catch up on you. But I think when you look back at it, and I've looked obviously back at many times of history of Leeds United, that it could, the pressure then, the latter stages of seasons, does sort of sometimes catch up with supporters, players, past history, experiences, um, and that can play a part. Look, we only have to look over the last couple of years and, and years gone by, even when Howard won the, the old first division and promotion the year before that. It went down to the last couple of games in both mm. of them, them memorable seasons. So, and obviously last year we all know what happened last year. And so it can be the the expectation and the pressure starts to mount, coupled with the extra games that we were playing because it had been a long season. But um, we just had to keep being focused. We were obviously going into um, games still believing we were a good team. We had that run in March, which we lost four in the bounce, which was put us under a lot of pressure. Um, we were still obviously in the top two, but we'd gone from being really comfortable in the top two to, to teams below as we're catching us in around the playoffs. And I think we lost to um, we lost to Swindon three 0 on the Easter Saturday it was, and we and we and that was a tough day that to be fair because we had to go to function at night and there was a lot of supporters in in the in the room, giving us all a lot of. St- stick because right this though we'd lost three 0 at home against anybody, but Swindon were, were pe- potentially trying to catch us into that um, automatic promotion places. But then we went to, uh, went down, we got trained on the Sunday morning, went down to Yeovil um, that afternoon, which was a camel's ride, as you know. And then uh, <laughs> and then we had the game live on Sky on, on, on Easter Monday lunchtime. And um, an unlikely hero scored us two goals, didn't he? Richard Naylor got mm-hmm. us two goals and that just got us back on track a little bit. It stopped the rot got us back to a winning feel-good factor amongst the cells um, and and obviously then gives us the opportunity to carry on what we were trying to do. Gaffer, yeah. do, you, do you think that was um, the big turning point then? Like, like you just got back on track. Look, just, to, just just more than uh, for, for the boys, really, just to kind of, right, we've had a little bit of a wobble. Um, we're, like I said, we're back on track and we, we know what we need to do between now and end of the season. Well, when you know when you know that Nails has scored two goals in a game, you know you're back on track. <laughs> that doesn't happen that often, by the way. <laughs> and, wow. and he will, but he will. To be fair to him, he, he did used to be a centre forward, so he did have a couple of goals in him. But uh, he'd not scored too many goals that season. But it was an important win because we had to stop the cycle of losing games and adding extra pressure to ourselves and the supporters. Um, and it was an opportunity. Um, a tough game to go, but to go on, right now we've stopped the cycle of defeat, which can it can play tough on mentally for everybody, as you know. Then we were back on track and we went on a decent little run after that. Yeah, I'm wondering about the, that sort of pressure. Um, and uh, Ben, if I come to you first, uh, the, 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 do play. I mean, how much when you see that sort of like the the, the run of results. Um, how much pressure do players feel? Or do you just think, oh, I'm just going to go out and I've got to play my own game and it will be all right in the end. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. But how much pressure do, do, do you feel individually as a player? Well, I think first and foremost, Darren, when you, every time you play for Leeds United, there's the pressure, there's the, the demand for the fans. 
But the pressure we put on ourselves, the pressure the gaffer and the, the staff put on us to, to perform, um, that, that, that came in every day in training um, and, and every match we played. So it, it, it was kind of difficult to put a finger on um, things then going through the run because from what I remember, we didn't do anything different. Training was still the same. We still worked hard. We still tried to have as little bit of fun as and when we uh, could. Um, so the preparation was exactly the same as when we were going on, uh, when we was on a really good run. So sometimes it, you, you try and look into little things. Um, I'm sure, like, I'm sure uh, Gaffer was at the time trying to like trying to mix things up maybe. But as players, we were um, just going into games still confident. But it's just it's one of those things that happens throughout our course of the season. If you could win every game, we close through a, com- a campaign. It, it wouldn't be Leeds United to do that. So um, we had to make it a little bit more difficult, didn't we, Bex? <laughs> Yes, you hit the nail on the head. It wouldn't be Leeds United if it was easy, would it? No. Um, but, you know, like you you go through a, a run of games and for, from a striker's perspective, if you haven't scored for one game, you're not bothered. You haven't scored for two. It doesn't really bother you, but you, you're starting to think to yourself, right, well, if I don't get one in the next game, is this class as a drought? You don't get one in the next one, the next one, and then you start thinking to yourself, well, I need to try and try a little bit harder here. And then all the things that you do naturally, which have worked for you leading up to that point, tend to go out the window and you're, you're over, overthinking things and, and you, your, your natural confidence disappears in front of goal. Um, so I tried, I, I've always tried to just let my, my natural ability take over and, and try and be as confident as I can in front of goal. I know if I don't if I don't score the first, second, or third shots, I'm going to get another one. If I don't get an, if I don't score the fourth, I'll score the fifth. If I don't score the fifth, I'll get the sixth, and so on, and so forth. And that's my mindset. That's my mentality on how I uh, found my way through uh, one of the droughts in, in in my career, which I found quite difficult at the time. Did, yeah. did, was it sort of like doubly important for you as well, Jermaine? Because, of course, you know, in that sort of like second half of the season, you know, you, you, you knew you were going to be leaving uh, at the end of the season. And that must make, uh, you know, you want to leave on that sort of real high, I suppose. Yeah. I, 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 yes. And yeah, I didn't want to leave, but um, it's it's one of those things I've, I've made clear many a times. and. Um, I wanted to be able to go out on the best possible terms if it was to be the end of uh, of my least the United career. So um, the way that it, it managed to to work out in the end, I guess, was the perfect way to leave if there if, if there ever was one. Um, but like I, I would love to have been playing for Leeds in the Champ and then so on uh, again in the in the Premier League as well. Um, mm. But now, as a fan, I've, I've been able to watch Leeds United in the Championship, and uh, next season, uh, with uh, hopefully if everything continues uh, the way it's going, and, and football gets back to normal, and, and the runs continue as they are, uh, we will be supporting Leeds United in the Premier League. Mm. Fing, f- fingers crossed, X. But in, in in that run leading up to kind of that period, Gaffer, though, um, coming towards the end of the season. You dropped Bex. What what was going on there? Well, he, he, he wasn't playing well enough, was he? You know, he was on a goals route, wasn't he? <laughs> so, I, think, I, think was a, I think since since January, there's a lot of talk about what was Jermaine's future. Obviously, we turned down money from Newcastle that winter with the with the given his word that if if um if he's if we turn down this money from newcastle um stay with us help us get promoted and and then you can do whatever you want come the end of the contract and fair play to jermaine he, he decided to stay um but it come to a point when maybe things were just affecting him a little bit they were just i was looking for different formulas i think we spoke about this the other day maybe he had a little little niggle that kept him out the team for on a Tuesday night somewhere um, and the team did really well and then I decided that like I did a lot of the time if the team are playing well and, and winning games and, and regardless who's out the team then I'll, I will be fair to the lads who have been in it and winning games so um, I think it just gives Jermaine he might be first to admit that he'd give himself a little bit of a breather a little bit of time to 
refocus on on what was going to be coming at the back end of the season. So there are different factors. And look, ultimately, you make these decisions and it's never an easy decision because you're leaving out the best goal scorer in League One. Unfortunately, it worked. That was my decision. If it hadn't worked, then it had been Snod's and Dusty's decision. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That's the sign of a true manager. I like in that delegation. The delegation. Sorry, or, Ke- or Ken, should I say Ken Bates? Not much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- throw him under the bus. Not, not uh, Snods and Dusty. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, well, let, let's come on then to that final uh, game of the season. Uh, Bex, I come to you first of all, of course, um, because you're, you're made captain. Uh, um, were you surprised about that and getting the armband on that final game? Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I was a little bit surprised. I was handed the armband and um was actually captain. Um <laughs> <the> game, <laughs> I think it was the game before. Um Dusty and Snods and Gaffer decided to between them come up with this plan that they'll throw me the armband and when they when they see my eyes glowing white and my smile getting bigger, they'll tell me to pass the armband over to somebody else. So <laughs> <laughs> Snod's through the armband and, and I, I I picked it up and I looked at him and I was like, no, is this for me? And he went, yeah, do me a favour, Bex, pass it over there to Brad. And I was like, <laughs> no, please, just let me hold on to it just for a little bit longer. <laughs> um, so, so when the Bristol game kicked up, uh, came up, um, Snod's, or, uh, was it Snod's or was it you, Gaffer? Gave me the armband. I think it might have been Snod's. I can't remember exactly. Gave me the armband. Love, yeah. Yeah, and um, I looked at him and then I went to to look for somebody else to pass it to just because I thought, look, this is prank number two. It's funny the first time, it's not going to work a second time. <laughs> um, and it, it ended up being the case where where I was the uh, the skipper for the day. Um, but it took about five, ten minutes to to convince me that was that was the case. Wow. You know, the referee knocked on the door and said, right, I need the captains to come in and Snods is trying to get me to go next door, and I think Gaff tried. <laughs> Gaff told me to go next door as well. Um, and you know what? I, 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 we mentioned this before in the um, in our chat uh, the other day. It was it was genuinely the the most proud is the proudest moment of my Leeds United career. Mm. So when when Gaff for once again much much appreciation. When 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 did you decide to make him captain, Gaffer? Uh, when I'd run out of all of the other options. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, on the morning, of, basically on the morning of home games, I'd take my dog out for a walk, and I think on that particular day, I'd not really finalised the team too much, and then that gives me a bit of time to think about what we, what I'm going to do when I'm out with my dog walking it, and then. And set on set uh, my team what was going to be, and then I'm thinking, well, Neil, who's the captain, is injured. Um, Johnny Housen was on the bench; who was probably his second choice. Um, Snodgrass, who was no Snod, was never going to be captain. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I just and I just felt that it was it was just the right thing to do. That given that Jermaine enjoyed playing in the big games and the ex, and what lift it would give him coming back into the team, but also then sort of having this re- extra responsibility. I just felt that he would thrive on the extra responsibility, the extra spark it might give him, the extra lift it might give him going into the last game of the season. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot of things. I think it was probably my dog that decided on the decision. <laughs> 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 I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's the dog design on it. Um, in the game itself, let, let's talk. We, we have to talk about Mad Max, um, uh, uh, who uh, Mad Max. Um, Max Gradle, bless him. Um, who uh, I'm just reading Ryan's notes here, and I like this. Where Max Gradle, in brackets, lost his shit. Um, uh, what was uh, what was going through Simon? Let's go. Let's come to you first of all. What was what was going through your mind when uh, Max Gradle had a, a funny five? Yeah, like, wow, well, here we go. What are we going to do now? Um, but basically, obviously, I can't repeat what I was seeking really inside. Too many <laughs> expletives, I think. But Max was, I love Max the bit. He was an unbelievable, jolly person. He, he he was sort of 
quiet but the life and soul. He loved completely this lovable smile, and he, he worked his socks off, and he was certainly a talented player. And and just to do that, it was just one of amazement. Really, I was a little bit stunned to start with because it was. It wasn't really in his nature to do something like that. He'd had a little bit of a coming together with Daniel Jones and he'd kicked out of him. And then all of a sudden, the red mist appeared. And you can you see players for, for 30 seconds a minute, they don't know what they're doing. And he, and that was that would happen to Max. He was just completely thrown completely out of character. And, and Jermaine, as captain, was going over there trying to sort him out. He's still trying to go to the referee to try and get the red cards rescinded. Probably more through sort of embarrassment of what he'd left us in the, in the lurch with, with the team. Um, and we're going to the dressing room at half time. And, it, it, and I'd normally go, I'd go into my room as I do every game to just gather my thoughts. And I go into the dressing room and it is absolute carnage. There's like <laughs> lads swearing, effing and jeffing. There's Max doing this, he's crying, he's got all sorts. And, and it was just, I just said to the players, look, what's happened has happened. We cannot affect that now. You to Max a point to him. You better hope that somebody in this dressing room is going to get you out of a whole lot of trouble. Because if you don't, then you will not be one most popular person in Leeds. And <laughs> and he, he he was genuinely sorry in, in terms of and gutted what he'd done because, as I said, he wasn't that type of character. But from then on in the dressing room, it was all about right. What we're going to do for the second half um, coming up? We had to make sure we gather, regathered the focus. What we needed to do. How we're going to play what we're going to do and uh, how the game was going to try and pan out. And, and going back to the half-time whistle, I remember sort of walking down the tunnel, I've probably said this a few times to a few people, that all of a sudden I'm next to Daniel Jones, who got, who'd been involved in the incident with Max. And I said somehow it just came up to me and I said to him, do you know where you're going to be playing second half of the, of, of the game? And I pointed to the northwest, uh, northeast corner. And I said, well, that is the furthest point away from the tunnel. If we don't win this game, all the best getting off this pitch. And it was <laughs> exact words, were they? Like, all the best getting off the pitch. They were the, the like, exact words. So, <laughs> so a little bit of, bit of psychology going into his head and that. And then all the thoughts that we had at half time was all about sort of what how we wanted it to try and pan out and that went out of the window after about three or four minutes all of a sudden Daniel Jones goes down and crosses one for Daryl Duffy to score and all of a sudden we're one down with ten men with ten men aren't we? Mm. Top shit I mean, outing though Jermaine, Top shit outing. For, for you how, how was that when when Max got sent off and and like say half time comes and you're thinking because the ball going into that game the ball was in Leeds court really we if we won we were up not you know the ball was in our court um but obviously after that incident you were down to 10 men you know you you were the captain for the day and it's a proud moment for yourself but you had to really pick these boys up along with the gaffer and coaches etc I mean how was it for you when we went down 10 we're down to 10 men and then went one nil down um, do you know what? It was, it was tough. It was tough initially because Maxi, it felt like Max was there to try and ruin my big day. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, joking aside, he, as Gaffer, Gaffer's uh, nailed it with when it comes to Max, he was a, he's a very emotional player, a very um, heart on his sleeve type of player, but he, he's so harmless. Like he, he, he was such a, a soft person but such a lovely person um but when we we went down to 10 men the the first 30 30 seconds to a minute i think it was it it, it kind of stunned ellen road and then when we uh, managed to uh, gather ourselves back together again um it was almost like we were the team that had 11 players and they had the 10 players. You know, we, we started dominating the game. We uh, passed the ball really well, moved it quickly. Um, and then halftime obviously came out the second half. And then when they got their, their goal, again, it was another shock to the system. It kind of just reiterated, wow, hold on a minute. This is, this is the real deal. We're, we're really up for it. We're like, they're really up for it now. They're, they've got a goal up. They're a, a man up as well. So I think it took a, about another 60 seconds or so after they scored for the, the fans to get right behind us again. And, and again, like I mentioned before, it was almost like we were the team with a player 
uh, with a, a player more than they had because we, again, dominated possession. We were the better team in, in and out of possession, um, creating chances galore. Um, and then we had a, a couple of good substitutions as well. Um, Johnny House, when he came on, he, he, he changed the game for the, for the good. Um, mm. But it was, it was difficult times to, to kind of try and get to grips with knowing everything that, that was being weighed onto, onto the club, what, everything that, that that one game meant. Mm. You know, we got the whole season of massive ups and then a couple of lows and, and so on and so forth. For it to boil down to one game and then to, to have um, a situation almost taken out of our hands was uh, was a, a, a tough one. It was a tough one to take. Yeah. Wondering about, uh, of course, you mentioned there Johnny Housen coming on and uh, getting the equaliser. And then, of course, you step up, Jermaine, and score the, the, maybe the second most memorable goal of that season um, uh, f- f- from your point of view. I mean, that must have just felt unbelievable <laughs> after what had happened. Not like you just said, just over the whole season. And then in that game, the amount of drama and things that happened in that game to get that, that uh, what turned out to be the winning goal, uh, that just must have felt unbelievable. Honestly, it was it was crazy. So when the goalkeeper, what what the goalkeeper should have done, um, he he gathered the ball. I can't remember whether he caught a cross or, or whatever it might have been, um, and he tried to throw the ball out early over my head, which was silly because they're winning one nil away from home against ten men. So you you should shut the game off, slow it down, and and frustrate the opposition. Um, when he threw it, I managed to jump up, got a little t- a little flick on it, um, and Brad has picked the ball up and he's, he's cutting him from the left and I'm screaming at him, Brad, square it. Give it to me. I'm here. I'm free. Just do it. What, hold on, mate. What are you doing? Don't shoot. Why are you lining up to shoot? He shoots, shoots to uh, uh, Luciano, was at the far post. I'm by the penalty spot. The ball bounces off the defender's foot and it just drops in front of me on the bounce. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is, this is perfect. This is, <laughs> this is perfect. All I have to do is get a clean connection on it. Keep it low, hit it underneath the goalkeeper. If I can keep it close to his body and, and we'll, we'll be off. We'll be celebrating and, and hopefully this will be it. So I, I did exactly that. I managed to get a clean connection underneath the keeper's body. Um, and then off I went. <laughs> into the corner. Just, 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 just describe describe the feeling uh, personally. Just when the ball's at the back of the net, just obviously the atmosphere, the euphoria, just all around the ground. But for you particularly to get that goal, honestly, it was it was phenomenal because the, the years prior to leading up to that moment, I'd been to Cardiff Stadium uh, and lost three 0 to Watford. Um, Lost 1-0 to Doncaster at Wembley Stadium. Lost over two legs to Millwall in the semi-finals. In the playoffs, sorry. Um, so to, to have been to two uh, playoff finals and one playoff semi-final and not been able to, to come away with anything in those ones. Um, to finally been able to, to get something back and, and you know, have some kind of positivity leading out of the season was was absolutely unbelievable and, and the eruption and I'm pretty sure all the Leeds fans felt what I felt that moment um, which was like the biggest moment of euphoria I've, I've, I think I've, I've felt my whole career it's, it was incredible absolutely incredible the eruption of sound was phenomenal mm, yeah. it was phenomenal Gaff, I mean, Gaff, 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 how, how was it for you because you're trying to keep calm and cool, collected like a manager's supposed to be doing. And then you see Beck score that goal. You look at the clock and there's nearly enough about half an hour still to play. You're thinking, oh no, still got, still got a long time to go here. Yeah, I think I give myself about five Five seconds being a Leeds United fan, jumping up and down and celebrating. <laughs> and then I realised, yeah, we've still got half an hour still to go here. Um, and it was, we, we had to make sure, like as Jermaine mentioned it, we were playing, once that equaliser went in from Johnny in the first place, the whole place erupted. We were totally dominant. They were nothing to play for. But we, but the winner goes, the second one goes in, and you've got still half an hour to play, or just under. 
And it was all about making sure that we just did whatever we needed to do. Last thing we needed was another kick in the teeth where they go down the other end, somebody loses concentration, does something stupid, and and something that is in the grasp of our of our hands is taken away from by not not nobody concentrating or doing something stupid. So we all had to refocus. And then I think as the game was going on, and the, it, they weren't really too interesting about it. I think they were just going to be happy to get off the pitch alive. Um, if they'd done something stupid like equalise, um, and and and, they all, and I remember like the last few minutes of the game, looking round and there's all there's all lads behind us and waiting to hopefully celebrate. Nothing was going to happen, and we're just waiting for the final whistle to um, to be blown. And ultimately, as I mentioned the story earlier, Daniel Jones, a minute from time, he stood next to me in front of our dugout, <laughs> waiting to shoot down the tunnel. <laughs> So we'd gone from left back to right wing, essentially. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? I think, I think he, 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 if it's any bit of no, any, any bit of um, advice that he's ever taken seriously, that was a little bit of advice that he took very, very seriously because I think he, he realised what potentially could go wrong for himself. Um, but when the whistle went, but when the whistle went, it was, it was obviously. A lot of emotions for everybody. Um, ultimately, well, it was one of relief, really, more than anything that we'd gone through the roller coaster ride of the whole day. Uh, but ultimately, the season ups and downs, as the saying goes, anywhere that we'd accomplished what we needed to do, and it was a huge amount of relief for everybody that we'd done it. And and the scenes were remarkable. I sort of shot down the tunnel very quickly because um, the fans were running on. Players were obviously still on the pitch, having their shirts taken off them, all sorts. <laughs> and I said it again to somebody the other day, I always remember, and I still see the side now, Ben, the stadium announcer, is telling everybody <laughs> to get off the pitch while on the pitch. <laughs> Not even have a chance of trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit there's a bit of video out at the moment of that end, isn't there? There's a bit of video and all you can hear is Ben Fry going, uh, please can you get off the pitch? Please can you get off the pitch? And it it's just not gonna happen. Didn't you get on the mic at one point, yeah. Simon, as I remember? Uh, I were at the game and I remember I'm sure I heard your voice like, Can you get off pitch, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ben Ben says, Look, the mic take more on notice of you and I went yeah good one I'll ask him but I'm pretty sure I know what the answer's going to be I think some people are still there now <laughs> probably probably <laughs> Um, when that uh, final whistle goes, I mean, obviously it's massive celebrations. Um, ben, come to you. I mean, what, what were those celebrations like? I mean, after it's sort of like the the euphoria sort of like dies, dies down. How, how did the uh, the team and the squad celebrate that evening? Um, quite a night, Darren. Uh, a couple of drinks <laughs> um, home, home, and just watched a bit of TV. Too. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we we had um no we we had the um, player of the year awards that night. Oh wow! So, um, can you can you imagine if it didn't go to plan? Oh wow! The, uh, yeah, that would have been the, awkward. Um, the, atm- the atmosphere around that. So, no, as you as you can imagine, the um, un- unbelievable scenes because you always you always picture like what it what it'd be like, but it, like it just exceeded all your expectations and all your kind of wildest dreams. To be honest, um, and right and rightly so. Um, um, as Bex put it there. You forget some some of the boys had been around for quite a long time. Like Beck's been, like I said, been uh, to Cardiff, Wembley, lost in the playoff semi-final. So to finally do it, it's just a massive relief. But also some of the staff, like one of uh, my best kind of memories of that day. So the celebrations have died down. We're in the changing room. And Harvey Sharman, who were um, the physio at the time, I see him and he's just sat down, um, just sat down in the in, on the seats and he's he's crying. And I'm like, Harvey, you're all right. And um, it, yeah, and it would, it would just the emotion um, just pouring out. Obviously, they were, they were happy tears, but it just, it just um, showed to me um, these people who've been at the club for years as well how much it meant to them um, to have to have this achievement. And um, yeah, it's it's fantastic, unbelievable memories um, with with the staff and the boys. But just to see people who've been at the club for years and um, I, in particular, Harvey had a lot of heartbreak um, with, with the club. To finally see something like that, that it, it does mean an awful, awful lot to, to people with, with the club. Definitely. Simon, um, obviously, we spoke before, you are a Leeds fan. You know, you grew up in North Yorkshire um, supporting Leeds United. Your first full season as a Leeds United manager, um, you know, 
to get promoted. How did that feel for you? You know, when that final whistle went, everything calmed down. Did you just sit at home with a a pint of lager or a whiskey, just thinking, "Wow, I've done it." <laughs> <laughs> Stay at home. You're having a laugh at you. Out in town celebrating. I bet you are. You. <laughs> 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 no, I, well, it was because we had the play of the year too as well. It was, um, as you said, that could have been a real, real disappointing night as well. But it was ended up being a real memorable night. I remember going off to the foundry in town um, to a restaurant and just having with my staff and just having a the odd glass of champagne, a few beers, and uh, and celebrating that way. And it probably wasn't to the next morning because I was, I was exhausted because the mental side of of doing things on the touchline and the emotions. Um, it was it was a sense of relief rather than anything else really that we we managed to achieve what we set out to do because the club had obviously gone through too many years of being uh, in League One too many years of disappointment at least we'd given something back to the the city and the supporters to to make them feel proud again and I think it was the next few days that you actually realise what you'd actually done um, and what you brought to the city and the football club for the people but then it was more or less thinking right. Championship football next year, what we're doing, need to start planning of new players, pre-season games, um, um, pre-season tours, etc. And it was all about getting back to the work of the reality of the championship very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and Jermaine, um, your thoughts on the on the celebrations and, uh, you know, on what was, you know, your last game for, for Leeds United, but yeah, we sort of touched on it before. What, what a way to bow out, mate. Yeah, it was it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and as as Gaffa touched on there, you just you get to a point where you're just drained. You're physically, mentally, emotionally drained because of of everything that you've literally just been through. Um, so it took a it took a little while to to kind of come to terms with what we just achieved and and how well we just achieved it. Um, the manner in which we we achieved it and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, what I wish I'd done is stayed in and around the city centre a little bit longer. Um, I kind of just pre-planned a, a holiday to, to... I've always done it. As soon as the season's finished, within the first three or four days, I've, I've been abroad, um, feet up, and just, just relaxing and chilling and taking in the sun. Um, and I did the exact same thing again, but if I could change anything, I would I would... I would delay that. I would delay getting away and just just soak up um, the atmosphere of of what it felt like and what it meant to to all the fans. To um, I know it would have been carnage, and I, I probably would have had <laughs> one or two drinks bought for for myself and the boys. So. One or two, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, should have made the most of that, shouldn't we? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did. Bex, don't worry. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, I, I had your drinks. <laughs> that makes perfect sense now. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, Ryan. Um, I could talk to these guys all day, um, but we're probably yeah. going to have to let them go. I, I would imagine. Um, that, but it was a, an amazing uh, season. It's fantastic that we've been able to commemorate it um, in this way um, on the tenth anniversary. And uh, so, Jermaine, thank you so much for joining us on, on LS11. It's been a real chat, uh, a treat to, to chat to you about uh, the, the season. Uh, so uh, and we'll, we'll, you're always welcome back on the podcast, but thanks very much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much for having me, guys. It's been great fun. And like you said, I can do this all day. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I've got, to, I've got to teach these kids something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Simon, we don't want to keep you from your yoga, so um, thank you very much uh, for, for joining us this morning. Always a pleasure to chat to you. No worries. Stay safe, everybody. Really enjoyed it, and uh, look after yourself, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. It's been superb to talk to you and reminisce about one of the greatest seasons in this recent history, really, you know, as a Leeds fan. I loved that season and what a, what a day at Ellen Road, uh, um, well, you know, that Bristol Rovers game in, in particular, but, yeah. you know, throughout the season, that Norwich game and the Man United game, you know, all all superb memories and live with me as a fan for a long time. And, and hopefully all the people watching this as well will, will remember them for, for a long time too. So thank you very much. Yeah, big thanks to Jermaine. Big thanks to Simon Grayson. Also, big thanks Ben Parker, of course, as ever. Uh, thanks very much uh, to you, mate. Uh, stay safe. Ryan, thank you very much. 
Cheers. Um, uh, it's been a pleasure as ever. We'll see you again on the regular podcast, of course, for LS11. Uh, that'll be streaming on Facebook and YouTube uh, on a Wednesday morning from 10 a.m. during this uh, challenging lockdown period. Um, but, of course, you can download the audio um, from your favourite podcast provider at any time you want. Uh, there's plenty of back episodes just to keep you going during this uh, uh, during this lockdown. So make sure you download them, like, subscribe, give us a nice big five-star review, and we'll catch you very soon. I hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers. This is LS11.